Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today. My name's uh, Commissioner Andy Tobin. With me is Commissioner Bob Burns. So uh, we're grateful that you came out to join us today. This is a continuation from our meeting this morning, and there'll be another meeting here later uh, this afternoon. Uh, so uh, I want to just give you some clarification. So uh, everything you say in here will be recorded. That's why we have our faithful stenographer here. If you're reading a statement and you think you're running out of time, because you, know, you can see the crowd, we're trying to make sure everybody gets their chance to speak, three minutes or, and what have you. You can always take your paper and bring it to the stenographer as well if you think you've got, you didn't get enough time in. And we'll go ahead and we'll put that in the, in the, uh, in the docket. For those of you who, whose neighbors couldn't be here or couldn't be at any of the other six meetings, there's a docket that you can go online to www.azcc, for Arizona Corporation Commission.gov. You can go on there and there's a docket. So any of your neighbors, or any of your friends, you can, you know, can write into that as well. And the docket number is WS, you don't have to memorize this. If you, are you gonna put this on the website or on the, your newsletter? Okay, WS02987A. 17-0392. So before we get started, I'm going to ask uh, Commissioner Burns to make a few comments. I would just like to share that uh, many of those who, who came in and discussed and testified this morning, they were saying that we were opposing this rate increase. Because we heard from so many of you, I want to make it clear that Johnson Utilities did not file on their own to come in for a rate increase. The commission voted to bring them into the commission so we can do a rate review. That's the only way we get to do an audit. Okay, so just so you know, I just want to clear that up. I think there's some people from Johnson here. Can you raise your hand if they're, okay. So, I mean, that's what, that's what really happened. So a lot of folks was com were coming in saying, we oppose this rate hike. And so when you see rate, it, it's a rate review. And I think it's, and it's the only way really to go through and, and do a full audit. So that's what the commission did months ago. And that's why you see that, that, that December 31st, Johnson Utilities brought all their records in so that we can begin this rate process for review. So I just want to make that clear to you in case you haven't heard. So the way the process goes here today, as everyone's going to get in, I don't know if we have more chairs. We have some ladies in the back. Are we? Okay, supervisors. So, so our county supervisors are here. If you'd stand up. Do you want to speak again this time, or did you do enough damage to us earlier this morning? <laughs> okay. Okay, why don't we do that? We already pledged and prayed this morning, so, uh, so out of respect for our uh, elected officials. Are there any other elected officials here? Okay, so we've got two county supervisors that may want to speak. With that, I'm going to uh, pass the microphone on to Commissioner Burns for any comments he may have. Thank you. Yes, well, and I'd like to welcome you as well and uh, try not to say the same things that Commissioner Tobin said, but uh, expand on them just a little. The docket uh, is a, a record of all the input on the case for us to review when we make our decision. And so it's important that if you have comments or, and especially if you have uh, evidence such as your uh, water bills and so forth that will show uh, evidence in the, in the proceedings, those are important things to put into the docket. Um, the other thing is on the, on the rate case uh, and the fact that the commission ordered the utility to come in and provide us with information uh, the final result of that will in all probability be a recommended order and opinion written by an administrative law judge and brought before the commission for a decision and the decision can be an increase, a decrease, or uh, modifications to the, to the order. So those are all the things that can still happen here, but your input is extremely important and that's why we're here and we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Commissioner Burns. So without further ado, I'm going to, I'm going to begin in the process. I'm going to allow our, commission, our uh, county supervisor to speak. Did you want to? 
Mr. Good, Supervisor Goodman, if you'd like to go speak, and Supervisor House is over in the corner if folks want to see him after we're done. <clears throat> For the sake of uh, not actually duplicating what I've said earlier today. Let me check and make sure. You got a microphone? Can you hear me back there? Can you hear me now? <laughs> okay. Okay, we just had So we'll a... have to kiss the microphone, Okay, I there think. we go. All right. Uh, first of all, again, I'd like to express our gratitude for the commissioner, the commissioners, you, you, you being present, as well as ADEQ, the Arizona Department of Environmental Quality, for making yourselves available and coming here to listen to our feedback. Um, the one thing that I'd like to make as a public, there's more of us here today in this session right now, that you would be respectful to one another, that uh, this, these proceedings are more along the line of a court of law. And so just so that I can make it pretty clear here, um, I, I used a joke earlier and I'm gonna repeat the joke. When I was a kid, my brothers and I, when we got unruly, in church, my mom would usually grab us by the ear and yank us out. We have one of our law enforcements here. And so hopefully we don't have to get that dramatic. But uh, nonetheless, we, if we could just be respectful to one another. We also appreciate John's Utilities being here and listening to the public and some of their comments. And again, thank you for, and especially to our citizens for coming here. Make yourselves, this is an opportunity for you to make yourself heard. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Supervisor. Appreciate your being here as well. Uh, also, we uh, Arizona Department of Environmental Quality is actually here as well. There, there are three. You're down to two. You're gonna make. Will there be three tonight, or are you gonna lose one? Okay, there'll be more. Okay, so that's uh, very respectful. Thank you for your kind attention to be here personally and listen to uh, uh, to the citizens here as well. And please uh, uh, send that message to Director Cabrera. Okay. Let's begin. So uh, we're going to try to keep these to three-minute speeches. We're just not that good at taking notes, watching the clock, and kind of coordinating. So uh, try to stay within uh, reasonable bounds and uh, make your point. This way, everybody will be able to get uh, heard. And I'll try to speed you up before I, I uh, cut you off if you've gone too far. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to call up our first, uh, uh, our first speaker. Jean Stockton. Jean, are you available? Okay. And on deck behind Jean is Kathy Jacobs. And when, so uh, you're the first one to start. So the way this goes is you uh, say your name so our stenographer can get it and also your address and then okay. you can begin, okay? My name is Jean Stockton. My address is 29709 North Gecko Trail. I bought my property in 2009. I have previous uh, utility experience. I worked for a utility company in Nebraska for 16 years. I'm fairly appalled at the information that we get in our newsletters. The newsletters should pertain to what we should be doing for conserving water and improving the water service. I don't want to see propaganda against incorporation. I don't want to see what his personal opinions are. He should stick strictly to what he's providing us for a service and he needs to focus on keeping that service at a level that is acceptable to humans and our pets to consume. Okay, I'm, I'm being as brief and as to the point as, as I you. can be. And I would appreciate someone doing a thorough investigation in his metering devices. I had my... Okay, okay I, let me, uh, I did forget one thing. <laughs> so, We'll have some exceptional speakers up here who we can give really lengthy standing ovations to. With the crowd, we're gonna run out of time. And, and when the sonographer hears clapping, she just holds her key down for a while, so and it costs us more. 
So, so uh, if we can just not do the clapping, uh, and you, when you get them outside, you can high five them and all that good stuff. But let's kind of okay. do. So uh, I didn't, I didn't okay. uh, lose your time. So continue, one, please. One last point I'd like to make is I had my meter replaced. Uh, when, you, when they do your meter reading, if you use 9,000 gallons, they round it up. If you use 9,100 gallons, they round it up to 10,000. I have used, according to Johnson Utility, 30,000 gallons of water in one month. I have one dog who weighs 15 pounds. I really don't shower more than once a day, and I do not have a swimming pool. I don't, in, in, I can't fathom where that water's going. Then the next month, my water bill goes down to a more reasonable amount. And for the life of me, being involved with a water utility company, a water wastewater management company before, we never had any self-sealing pipes that would fix our leaky water. And that, that's what we're told. You have a leak. You do nothing to your water system and the leak disappears. I mean, it's magical here in Arizona. I'm glad I moved here. So um, I do have to go because I need to be on pain medication because I just had knee surgery. But I appreciate you taking the time to listen to everyone. And if you want a copy of my water bills and my usage, I have it with me. Well, thank you for coming. And if you'd like to send in notes, you can send them right into the docket online. Okay. If you didn't make an additional comment. So All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Kathy Jacobs, I, I think, is, uh, did I say, yeah, you were on up next, and thanks, Bob. And uh, LeBlanc for B. Bloomfield is on deck. My and husband and I have lived Kathy, in Kathy, can I just tell you, if you could do your name and address, oh, that would be great. Yeah. Kathy with a C, last name Jacobs, and we live at 35418 North Richardson Drive in Santan Valley. And... My husband and I have lived in Circle Cross Ranch since December 2012. Our water bill was always $80.02. Last June, it went up to $125.04. Then in July, it was $138.80. They told us we went from using three gallons a month to 10,000 to 12,000, and then it went back down to 3,000. That makes no sense. We have no pool, no backyard landscaping, no kids, I do three loads of laundry a week and run the dishwasher twice a week. Our toilets and our faucets do not leak. My husband's a federal mine inspector. He's out all week. When I complain, they said I must have a leak or our neighbors must be stealing the water. <laughs> Those excuses were false. They also sent out a worker who said our meter was working fine. In August, after I complained, the bill mysteriously went back down to the normal $80.02 for 3,000 gallons and has stayed consistent. If we had a leak, how did it mysteriously disappear on its own so that the bill went down to normal when we never fixed a leak that wasn't there? Three out of the last four times I've gone to Johnson Utilities to pay my bill, there's other people saying their bill was sky high and I heard the same response. Somebody's stealing your water or you must have a leak, it's not our fault. Well, I think they're crooked at Johnson Utilities it's ridiculous to think everybody just happens to start using three to four times their normal water rate all at the same time, or they all have neighbors start stealing at the same time. I'm sorry, that just doesn't happen. And I hope when this comes to a vote that you don't reward them by raising our rates after they gouge us all. Thank you. Thank you for coming. L. LeBlanc for B. Bloomfield, and on deck is Denise Farrell. Denise Farrell is on deck. My name is Lorna LeBlanc, and unfortunately, Mr. Bloomfield has not arrived with the water bills. He was called to a medical appointment. The other two people I was supposed to be with were called into work, and then one went to California to a funeral. So I'm going to do the best I can. I'm only here five months a year. So I have a unique perspective on the situation of Johnson Utilities. I've been following them with great interest. I recently had company come because they want to purchase a home. They wanted to purchase a home close to me. They chose not to because of the water situation and they are purchasing a home in Queen Creek. 
When I hear about rates increasing, I think it's time we sat down and figured out how much of our investment in our property has been devalued because of the reputation of Johnson Utilities. Furthermore, I refuse to use the water for anything except showering, washing the floors, watering the garden, doing the laundry, or flushing the toilet and sending it back where to, all too often it came from. Um, I will not use the water out of the faucet to boil rice, wash vegetables. Certainly I will not drink it. So we have the added expense of ensuring that we always have bottled water in the fridge. I also will not use the ice maker in the refrigerator. I think it is absolutely outrageous to talk about increasing rate for a water that we all too often are warned not to feed our babies, don't give it to the seniors. I do not want to pay for water that is unhealthy. If I bought a chocolate full of maggots, I'd take it back and get my money back. If I bought a, a apple that was rotten inside, I'd take it back and get a good apple. And that's how I feel about the water. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Denise Farrell, and on deck is Brian Brock. Brian Brock is on deck. My name is Denise Farrell. We live at 613 East Pasture Canyon Drive in Santan Valley. I thank you for the opportunity to speak today. I was not aware we would have that opportunity. So my uh, comments and my thoughts here are pretty random. I understand that if I ask a question, there won't be an answer, but I'd like the question on the record as well. Um, <clears throat> As some of the other folks have said, I really would not appreciate an increase for worse service, worse quality, and worse water pressure. Um, I read in the 475-page Johnson Utility document requesting a rate hike that there is a third-party management company over there. Um, I just wonder how much representation they have here today or how much uh, accountability they are held to. Um, Again, we have the, the same inconsistent billing. Um, we've been here since um, December of 2010, and there have been times, um, specifically five years ago, when we had house guests for three weeks from five different states, and our usage never went above 9,000 gallons. We do have a poll, which we have had to fill twice since we've been here. Our usage never went above 9,000 gallons. Then in August of 17, our bill went to $17,000. There's just the two of us in the house. 17,000 gallons. I'm glad you're paying attention. <laughs> Bob and I listen very closely. Um, I called and said, what's going on? They said, well, you must have a leak. So we then spent money on a plumber and a landscaper to be told that there was no leak. And then, amazingly, our usage went back down to two and 3,000 gallons a month. Um, the due date on the invoice doesn't necessarily mean that that's the due date. If you pay by the due date, the very next day you get a disconnect um, notice. We have received at least two since we've been here. Um, and ours, I'm never late with anything. Um, I was reading in something today that the January usage, um, the Gegard fees for January usage, um, just wanted to let you know it has not been reflected in any of my invoices as yet. There has been no, I've, I've paid January usage in February and the re decrease was not reflected in that invoice. Um, I've asked Johnson Utilities over the phone a number of times why there is no, why there are no wires from the remote reader in the box 
that leads to the neighbor's meter. Um, no explanation for that. When you call, you're on hold for 89 to 97 customers. Uh, if they call you back, I called once in July and waited six weeks for a callback. Um, oh, one last thing. Um, when I did two things, when I did call them, they said, don't ask for a new meter because a new meter would work better than the old meter and show more usage. <laughs> and um, oh, that, that's, that's good for now. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, Ms. Farrell. Uh, Mr. Okay, I was just going to ask if we have a humming microphone over here, which is under repair. Test one, two. All right, there we go. Mr. Brian Brock, you're up, and behind you is John and Govey. John, Mr. Brock, thank you. My name is Brian Brock. I live at 3621 West Goldmine Mountain Drive. Uh, mailing address is Queen Creek, but I do live in Santa Ana Heights, just around the corner. Uh, State and county officials, I thank you for the opportunity and for the representative for Johnson Utility that's here to hear from the, the people that live here. I'm opposed to any rate increase. Five years ago, we purchased our house uh, and my wife immediately before we moved in had all new appliances put in. Uh, about a year later, I noticed there was a whitish gray growth on our stainless steel dishwasher and I called because I had got the uh, extended warranty and asked them to come out and take a look and they said, oh, you have extremely hard water. And anyhow, I then looked into getting, you know, the problem taken care of, had a guy come out and for only $7,000, he could fix the problem. And I said, thank you very much. I'll consider it. Um, later contacted another company that did water tests and sent them, mailed them in a sample of my water. And um, they called me up and said, OK, you have extremely hard water. And unfortunately, I'm not real sure what the terminology is. I think it was suspended solids in the water. Uh, anyway, he said it was real high, about 380 parts. And he said the state limit was 80, if I'm remembering right. And I asked him if he could give me this in writing. And he says, no, they don't do that. And I says, OK. I'm a little leery about why they won't give it to me in writing, but I will look into it. I recently purchased a water softener uh, that has a built-in filtration system, put it on filters on my ice cube maker and the drinking water dispenser at the, the county, uh, or excuse me, at the counter, and I noticed Water flow was very, very diminished and went to bigger water filters uh, to filter out the water to the drinking water in the house and the ice maker. And I've since, uh, am now changing these about three times a year to give me decent ice cubes and, and drinking water because um, so I'm sure Johnson Utility is very much aware that right down the street, 391 homes are going in, across highway over in Morningstar. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing and saying 200 and some houses are going in there. Uh, there's plenty of growth in this area. 
And I understand there's a cost of doing business, but I think before I'd be voting for a rate increase, let's do something about the water quality. Um, they did show me when they came out to the house uh, that you know the water was grayish color, and he said that was from the solids in there. So uh, I appreciate the opportunity, and I hope that something can get done that we get some better water quality. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Brock. Appreciate you being here. Uh, Mr. John Angovi, and uh, on deck is Nancy Nyland. My name is John Angove, 87 okay. West Sundance Court, Santan Valley. We moved here from Indianapolis uh, last summer. So we followed the Flint water crisis very closely in June of last year, 15 people were charged criminally. They were indicted because of the drinking water in Flint. So we know that the commission uh, is taking this seriously. We appreciate it. With respect to profitability driving a rate increase, I would ask the commission, are there intercompany transfers, purchases from other Johnson affiliates or um, consulting fees that are above the line that, that drive the profitability down. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Angovi. Nancy Nyland is up, and Jack and Benita Smith are on deck. My name is Nancy Nyland. I live at 1510 West Santan Hills Drive, Queen Creek, Arizona. Actually, I'm on the HOA board for Skyline Ranch 1. We purchased our home in 2010. Uh, a couple of years later, as a homeowner, I was attending HOA meetings. Johnson Utilities came in. They were putting across a pipe in order to connect the two water tanks. So they were, in effect, asking our permission. The attitude was we had no choice in it. The reason they were doing this was because the one water tank would not stay under the required level for nitrates, and the other water tank was fine. So instead of fixing the problem with the first tank, what they did is they put the pipe in and mix the two tanks so they could get under the nitrate level. The second thing that has happened, now that I'm on the board, a couple of years ago, our water for the community really started to spike. And of course, we requested a meeting. We went down to their office on Hunt Highway, which of course is not corporate offices. We talked to a couple of employees, which of course they were unfortunate for them. They were there to hear our complaint. Our landscaper was there at the same time. Our water levels were up and down like everybody else is telling you. And the same thing, we were being told that we must have leaks. Our landscaper says no, there are no leaks. We have not had any issues. Besides that, they are all on timers. Everything should be at a regular level. There should not be these peaks. Plus, we discovered we were being billed out of one meter that the water was shut off. I do feel as though the commission has allowed some of this stuff. We were told with the mixing of the two tanks, of course, the commission approved that. The commission has approved that uh, water replenishment tax. So I do believe the commission needs to use more discretion as to what they are allowing this utility company to get by with, because I think this utility company should be considering giving rebates 
to its customers, certainly not charging customers more. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms. Nyland. Jack and Benita Smith in, on deck is uh, Lynn Hurley. Lynn Hurley. Hello, Jack and Benita Smith, 4572 East Soda Street, Santan Valley, Arizona. We live in uh, Carper Basin, and we moved here in 2015 in January. And I don't know how the, how the bills went or anything like that, so I waited to get bills. When I got bills, I paid bills because our credit is great. We never got a water bill, and then we got a water bill saying that uh, we passed due. And that's the first bill I got. So I went to Johnson Utility and, and asked them, can they reverse it? Because it's the first bill we got. They had a whole big basket full of return. Mine wasn't in it. You know why? Because two weeks, two months later, I got the bill, and it didn't have no return, nothing on it. Two. And so I said, okay, I just moved there, new development. So I asked the other neighbors to just move in. Same thing. They did not get a bill, so they were overcharging. Our bill has been ridiculous as well. My husband went in there. He raised holy cane with them. And guess what? It miraculously went down. But they told us the same thing. You must have a leak. Or if somebody else is using your water with you. Really, Johnson Utility, let's get this thing together. I'm tired of funding your pleasures. Let's get this water together, make it drinkable and usable for us so we don't have to spend extra money buying bottled water or else we got to sit up there and pay for a system that have decent water. Why are we paying Johnson Utilities if we have to pay somebody else for the things that they're getting paid for? You have anything? <laughs> yes, my name is Jack Smith, uh, and I've complained to Johnson several times, and as they say, we have water leaks. The field that I was in for 60 years there, I consistently, we were consistently taught to look for leaks because I was operating a boiler room and what they have been uh, keep a uh, building for uh, getting any damage or what have you, and then that was a certain formula we used that we could somewhat determine how much water we were using or the boiler was using. And like I told them there, we were not getting any leaks and I consistently still looks for any leaks and our bill is going up or staying the same, but it has went up quite a bit since we've been there. And the by time. the way, it's only us two. Okay, no now, food, no nothing. And yes, you I'm said sure. he was the one raising Cain? I'm thinking, <laughs> <laughs> ah. They don't want to see <laughs> Yeah, I'm figuring so. that myself. So anyway, I'm being yeah, married well, for 30-some-odd years. It's only two of us. It's only yeah. two of us. We have no pool, no dog. It's just us two. Well, I'm going to give Jack the last word on this one. Okay. <laughs> what do you well, have to say? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and as I had said, that with the... Uh, consistently looking for leaks in one month there. I did uh, meter the uh, meter, and our bill still came out just as much, if not higher. And as I said, I worked in that field for 60 years there, and we were supposed to look for leaks because we, could, we would use too much water, and uh, if it was a water leak, it would do damage to the property. And I do not have any leaks there at the house. Thank That's you, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. I appreciate bills. it. Thank you. Lynn Hurley and uh, on deck is William, um, uh, I'm going to mess it up, Marquand or something, but I'm going to hear uh, Lynn Hurley first. Good morning, um, afternoon. Thank you for allowing us to talk to you. I wanted to come up with some kind of icebreaker and say that for those of you that don't live in this area, we have two suburbs called... Can, you, can I get your Al address? In here? Yeah, thanks. All I'm going to say is Johnson Estates. I have my reasons. That's right. For those of you who um, don't live here, we've got two communities. One's called Santan Heights, and the other is called Pecan Creek. The joke is, it's Pecan Creek and Santan Shites. <laughs> but the joke's on us. Because for years, we have put up with weird smells, weird tastes, and weird customer service. 
And we want you to know that while we want to trust the commission until these allegations are proven or not proven, we don't know who to trust anymore. And if it is true that these ratepayers were paying, were asked to pay for personal um, income tax for a utility owner, it's a burn, no pun intended. Um, when you look out at this crowd, please understand that even as many of us are here, times 20 is who would want to be here, but people are frightened and scared and have been sued into silence. They are trepidatious to say what they think. And I'm even taking a risk being up here because I personally have been attacked in newsletters. For what reason? For voicing a concern about the one thing that a utility should do, which is provide tasty, clean water at a reasonable price. Nobody wants it for free. Nobody wants to be um, gouging or anything like that. But we just want what's fair. Right now, I'm a senior. I'm tied to buying gallons and gallons and gallons of water because our particulate matter measures weird. We've been told a lot of things, and every time I try calling the utility, I'm either 65th in line or never at all. I'm scared to even be up here because I know that pictures are being taken of who's here today. That's how we live. And I don't want to get all dramatic or teary because I don't want it to dilute my message. My message is a utility has one job and your oversight job is to please be sure that there is a full management audit, a full operations audit before any more money is given to this utility or I guess to any utility. Please look out for us. We're a county island and it's bad optics when supervisors take money in gobs from a utility or from any place that's this controversial. You can hear from these brave people that are coming up here, hobbling up here, trying to stand up here. They need your help. There's no one else. There's Ruko, but there's you, and that's it. So please come through for us, because this is our last chance. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Hurley. <laughs> William, did I mess your name up entirely? Oh, great. Okay, good. And be, after William is Ellen uh, Weitzel. My name is William Mark Quart, and it is 5612 East Valley View Drive. They say it's Florence, but it's Santan Valley, I think. Um, first of all, like the lady said, Bring it on, utilities. I don't scare easy. I'm a big guy. I have a cane. I know how to use it, okay? So just, just come ahead. I really don't care. But back to the subject, I'm not going to say anything about the water bills because we have enough people saying that. What I do want to say is the customer service problems. Uh, earlier this summer, the water at 9 o'clock in the morning was Johnson's utility utilities normal water. I won't say good, I won't say bad, but it was their normal water. At 10 o'clock when I went to fill in some bottles, the bottles came out brown. I called up the utility company. Luckily, I only had to wait for two calls. I don't know how that happened. But what I got was somebody behind the lady that I was talking to was telling her like a puppet, tell them it's not us, tell them it's the water heater, it's the hot water heater, it's going, it's problem, time to change it. Okay, I'm using cold water. <laughs> and it's kind of funny because an hour and a half later, the water's back to normal. So you tell me, is that the hot water heater or is it them? That's all I got. Thank you, Mr. Marquette. Ellen Weitzel, and on deck is uh, Stacy Gramazio. Good afternoon. Thank you for doing this for us. Ellen Weitzel, 31467 North Goldfield Road. So that lady made me a little nervous about, maybe I should be nervous about speaking out, but I'm going to speak out anyway. Uh, when we first moved here, there was a problem with the water water. Pressure. Everybody knows those problems off and on, off and on. Uh, one very nice man 
Who was it from the utility that finally helped you? Ohio. Ohio. Ohio finally helped us. He dogged it until he fixed the problem. Um, a valve had been left off. They opened up a new station or something, and they never turned the water on. They just left it off. He got to the bottom of it. But before that had happened, I had called in one time, being naive. We had had a 14 or 15,000 gallon bill. Normally it was seven or so. And they said, uh, well, you have a leak. We said, well, we, I may have a leak. I didn't know, but I was kind of concerned that nobody even called us. Oh, yes, my boss called you, she said. And I said, oh, what day did he call me? And she says, well, he called you a couple days ago. Well, our phone, we had a landline, but our phone showed all the calls that had ever been made. So I looked at it. I said, he never called. She says, don't call my, my boss a liar. He called you. So because I thought maybe it was the, naively thought, thinking it was the um, meter. So that happened. Um, and, and the fact that they do continue to send propaganda and I understand from the nice lady over there that the commission has decided that he is paying for that himself. I will guarantee you he's not paying for that propaganda himself. The, one, the explanation I got when I called them, Johnson Utilities, was, well, this is owned by Johnson, George Johnson. He can do anything he wants with it. That was their answer. I did get a hold of a nice lady at the corporate commission who helped me for a while, but they continued. They'd stop for six months and then they'd start right back up again. We don't need his opinions about anything except water. If he'd spend more time and energy on water, that would, would be what we would want. As well as, I think he needs to be very, very, very punished for using our money to pay his income tax. That's just, that's beyond the pale, his private income tax. That's beyond the pale. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Weitzel. Stacy Gramazio and on deck is Donna Forsythe. Okay, Stacy. Oh, Stacy, I got Donna Forsythe. I think is uh, is next. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry, Stacy. No, thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Stacy Gramazio. I'm here on my lunch hour um, as a Santan Valley resident. And I've been a resident since 2006, living at 950 West Oak Tree Lane, part of the Skyline Ranch community. Thank you um, to the two commissioners who are here. It is duly noted who is here listening to our concerns. Um, we thank you for providing this public hearing here in Santan Valley. Um, but um, mostly we are thankful to Supervisor Goodman for working so hard to protect the best interests, interests of his constituents. Over my almost 12 years as a Johnson Utilities customer, I've been a careful observer of how this company operates when it comes to customer service, the safety of residents, and the quality of water. I've also been a careful observer of how the Arizona Corporation Commission has served as the oversight to this utility company. We've been patient, but we are at our limit. Anybody else at their limit? Yeah. Thank you. As you begin the process for rate review, please consider the following. We've had sewage spill after sewage spill and nothing is done. We've had E. coli and high nitrates in the water, in the water with dubious notifications of them and nothing is done. We've had extraordinarily poor customer service experiences to the point of where a Johnson Utilities employee was even caught on camera, allegedly, berating a customer, one of the hundreds of customers who have complained about getting overcharged by thousands of gallons of water, of which they are certain they did not use, and nothing is done. Now it's possible we will be charged even more for water. Now I can accept that we pay more than municipalities because it is private and we're unincorporated. But you know, when our local schools ask for an override or beg our state legislature to fund our kids' education properly, I hear the argument from some people that elect, from some people and from elected officials that our schools should learn to do more with less, tighten things up. Being 49th in spending on education is good enough for Arizona. Well, I suggest that you use the same logic here and ask Johnson Utilities to simply tighten things up. 
They need your help and your oversight to provide better service, ensure our safety, and protect the quality of water. And this needs to happen within the current rates, which any resident here will agree are already extremely high. Simply take a very fiscally conservative look at this budget, and I'm sure it can be done. They had enough money to do bizarre things, like put a fire truck on Hunt Highway and move a bunch of dirt around, so there's always something going on. Our eyes are open and we are watching you carefully now. If it is not your job to ensure that we have good service, good water, and peace of mind that we are safe, then please tell us what your job is. Santan Valley has been ignored for far too long and we will remember which elected officials have truly done their job and duty to protect us and who has turned a blind eye to the problem while sitting comfortably in Paradise Valley or Scottsdale where I hear the water is just fine. Thank you. Okay. Suppose I lost the clapping argument long ago. Okay. Donna Forsyth. Okay, no worries. I know it, it just said you weren't certain, so I figured. Thank you, Donna. Uh, Kansas Steelman. And behind Candace, uh, I'm sorry, behind Candace will be William Barnes. I don't know, Commissioner. I, I kind of like your name for me the first time, Kansas Steelman. <laughs> <laughs> Can I do that? But I'm Candace Steelman. I live at 2216 West Mila Way, Santan Valley. I'm here as the vice president of the Santan Heights HOA. We're a community of 3,700 homes, and we have 100 acres of, of turf, of grass. This community was designed to have more greenery, more trees, and shrubbery. Prior to uh, 2016, in addition to Johnson Utilities, we were allowed to use cap water for irrigation. We have two decorative lakes at the entrances of our HOA. Those were filled with the cap water from which was pumped water for irrigation. However, that went away at the end of 2015. So early 2016, Johnson Utilities wanted us to use potable water at a rate that was vastly more expensive than we had been paying. We did find out that an Arizona state statute allowed those lakes to be filled with effluent water, which is partially treated water. And that's what we use for irrigation. However, in the summer, of 2016, we were suddenly receiving only enough water to water 40 acres of our 100 acres of grass. Johnson Utilities told us they did not have enough effluent water for us and also for other uh, communities in the area, uh, one of which did uh, initiate a lawsuit. We on the board question this lack of water we question whether Johnson Utilities is simply holding on to it for recharge credits. We've spent over a million dollars to replace 20 acres of lawn. We are going to spend almost that much to reduce even more. Why? Because we have no alternatives. We have no other place we can turn. So that is one problem. The next others have mentioned, so I'll only say, our water pressure. PSI throughout this community is 21 to 25. It should be 70. We've heard, I, I have no proof, anecdotally, I've heard that Johnson Utilities has the ability to give us correct water pressure. Why they don't, that's a question. Next, quality of water. That effluent water has so many particles in it, it's so bad that we're constantly having to flush our irrigation lines throughout this vast community, thus using more water at more expense. Last, Johnson Utilities has spewed uh, sewage into our decorative lakes twice. One was in 2014, uh, they did a lot of damage, did not want to pay for the damage, but uh, there was a lawsuit and it was settled. The second time in 2015, and this is where the ACC is involved, 
It cost us $13,000 to fix that spillage. The ACC sent an investigator who returned and quickly closed the case. And we received no further information, even though we repeatedly asked for it. So we felt like the ACC brushed us off. Again, as I stated earlier, we have no alternatives. We need alternatives. If you're going to approve this rate increase, what can you give us when things don't go right again? What kind of guarantee can you give that the money would be used to truly improve quality of water and infrastructure? I just have my doubts that that would happen. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Steelman. William Barnes, and on deck is uh, Amy uh, McIntyre Simpson. William Barnes. My name is William Barnes. We live at 830 East Blossom Road in Santan Valley. When we first moved out here, we moved to Queen Creek, which used municipal water, and everything was pretty good. Uh, we decided the house was too big, and we were going to downside, downsize, so we moved to Santan Valley. First thing I was told was get the biggest water treatment that you can get for your house because you can't drink the water in Santan Valley. You can walk across it, as did Christ <laughs> walking across the sea, but you can't drink it. The first bill I got <clears throat> was due the day after I got it. Now, we had just moved here. We had no idea. So I called the wonderful Johnson Utilities, and they told me that, yeah, it's due tomorrow, and if you don't pay, we'll send out a shutoff notice. I figured, well, this ought to be good. We're in here three days, and the water's going to get shut off. That's customer service. Uh, the only other thing I, I have to say is, if you guys are thinking about giving them a rate increase, I think maybe you should look at giving them a rate decrease. Nobody pays my income tax but me and my wife. And I, I think it was outrageous that they got that through. Maybe you should look at taking that back and uh, giving us a little kickback for all the time he's used our money to pay his taxes. Thank you, Mr. Barnes. Amy. Uh, hi, Amy. And on deck is Megan Kaplan. Hello. Um, my name is Amy Simpson, or McIntyre Simpson. My address is 29998 North Meadow Lane. I currently have a formal complaint against Johnson Utilities, and it's WS 02987A 16 0275. And Judge Hesla's recommendation, order, and opinion, he is recommending that you commissioners allow Johnson Utilities to discriminate against me in violation of ARS 40-334, which states a public service corporation shall not, as to rates, charges, service, facilities, or in any other respect, make or grant any preference or advantage to any person or subject any person to any prejudice or disadvantage. I am not sure how this recommendation in any way is appropriate. It is your job as commissioners, as well as Judge Hessler's job, to ensure that this utility follows the law and provides non-discriminatory service to all customers within his CCNN. 48 of my similarly situated neighbors have received water service under the same terms and conditions in which Johnson Utilities has denied me service under, the same terms in which the company still holds my deposit for. Allowing Johnson Utilities to discriminate against me makes myself and many other folks 
question the integrity of this commissioner, of, of the commissioners that we have voted for. The time is now for this commission to prove to this community that our elected officials have our best interest in mind, that you will protect us from the illegal actions of this company. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Simpson. <laughs> Megan Kaplan, and then on deck is Susan Day Villager. Hi, my name is Megan Kaplan. I live at 3702 West Carlos Lane here in Santan Heights. I have been a community member here for approximately 10 years now. I came from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and this is by far the worst service of any utility company that I've ever experienced in my life. The water here is undrinkable. I have a household of three people, myself, my 10-year-old daughter, and I currently care for my elderly mother. None of us can drink the water here. By recommendation of multiple physicians, it's not advisable. I also have pets. I have small animals that cannot drink the water at the recommendation of veterinarians. This is insane that I pay nearly $80 a month for water service that I can only use to irrigate my yard with, wash dishes with my dishwasher, take a shower with, and even at times I can't even do that, and do laundry. We have water pressure issues. Every time the water pressure drops, we get the lines flushed with chlorine. The chlorine smell is so intense when you turn on a faucet, it smells like an overchlorinated indoor pool in my residence. I shouldn't have to deal with that. I have severe asthma issues, and when this occurs, I can't even be in my own house. This is not acceptable. Something needs to be done. We should not be paying out the nose for service that we can't use, that's detrimental to our health, detrimental to our children, our seniors, as well as our pets. Something has to change. I had considered many years ago purchasing a home here in the community. I changed my mind quite quickly because of the issues with Johnson Utilities. And as a result, within the next year, I will be relocating my family out of the state of Arizona because I cannot put my health or my family's health in any further jeopardy because of this. I hope you please hear everyone because we have a lot of serious concerns. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Kaplan. Next up is Michael Sullivan and then Terry Strinfill. I think I wrote that right. Mr. Sullivan. Hi, Commissioners, thank you very much. Um, I'm Michael Sullivan, 1417 East Rosebud Drive in Santan Valley. Uh, I've spent the last decade or more working in government for another state. We've lived in states on the East Coast and Central United States and in the West. Uh, it was a shock to me to move here a number of years ago and find our realtor, as we bought the house, said, um, you need to get a water filter on your entire house because you can't use the water here. And then to find out about the number of health issues that had occurred, which have been spoken of. But to the rate issues of today, I have a, a water bill as an example. Uh, when my uh, sewer fee exceeds my water usage, it's the first state I've ever had where the sewer fee exceeds your water usage. It's, it's supposed to be tied to that usage. And then I find that the KGARD fee actually is more than my water usage. Now, I know a fee is not a tax, but that's a tax. And when you're, you call at 8.30 in the morning and you're the 75th in line uh, waiting, you know there's something else going on. Really, gentlemen, what this hearing should be about is the removal of the franchise of Johnson Water. If for no other reason than health and welfare, I believe the state is putting itself at risk. Let's look at Michigan, let's look at other cities. This is well documented. The 
criminal aspects that are going forward, the utility aspects that are going forward. Uh, you have these number of people here because they are counting on you to act in the capacity of authority that you have. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Ch Terry, Terry Strinfill. Strin Did I get that right? Is there a Terry here? Anyone named Terry? Okay. Okay, Marsha Rogers and then Bill Meeks. Okay, Bill Meeks, Marsha. Sir, you're, you're okay, one out of three. <laughs> Thank you, Bill, and I'll put on deck is John Hurley. John Hurley on deck. Mr. Meeks, go ahead. Good morning, my name is Bill Meeks. I live at 1352 East Barrett Drive in Santan Valley, so I'm a Johnson Ranch resident. Um, I'm originally from Iowa. We moved here about three years ago, so uh, Iowa has plentiful, clean, quality water, so for us it was a paradigm shift when we had to experience uh, this to one, and so our general, first of all, thank you for for having these meetings available, and thanks to all the brave folks out there who are willing to step forward and speak up. Uh, our concerns are basically, uh, one, that there is accessible, clean water, two, that there is quality water, three, that there is water pressure that is adequate for our needs, and four, of course, the cost issue that we're all talking about. And so uh, hopefully those issues can be addressed in a fair manner for all of us. And uh, I'd also like to speak just briefly about um, Johnson Ranch HOA has issues related to water pressure, among other things. I don't know if there's anyone here to speak officially for, for the HOA, but uh, that is an issue that we need to address also. Uh, all the common areas uh, that need water are are not always able to have that water um, to facilitate the, the services that are for the HOA. So thanks again for the time. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Meeks. Mr. Hurley, and after Mr. Hurley, Frank Goff. Good afternoon. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here, members of the commission. My name is John Hurley, it's spelled H-U-R-L-E-Y. I live in Johnson Estates here in Santan Valley. And uh, just a few comments. Um, I don't know where to start. <laughs> right? Yeah. I don't know where to start. Uh, so I'll keep my comments to the ones that you're looking for here uh, for the commission. I just wanted to uh, preface this by talking about my level of experience in seeing this as a context and a comparison. I've got 30 years experience in consulting to over 50 utilities across the country. Gas utilities, electric utilities, and water utilities. In the areas of planning, rate making, management, management audits, and operating efficiency. So, wow. This is really something. I would probably say very objectively that across the country, not only the utilities that I have worked with, but I have researched and my colleagues have researched, as well as utilities have researched, on a score of 1 to 10, the lowest utility score that I've ever seen prior to this has been a 3. And I'm saying this with as much objectivity as I can muster. This utility is clearly a number one. Yeah. Number one. And I'm not saying that because I have overstated expectations or standards that are ridiculously high. My mind is blown on what I'm seeing. There's even a mad background school. <laughs> and I've never seen a utility do this kind of a rate increase without an absolutely full management audit, procedural audit, operational audit, and financial audit. You get the idea. You know what these audits are all about. 
There's also deep concerns this community has about the relationship between jobs and utilities and, quite frankly, this commission. Okay? If anybody reads the paper, if anybody reads the paper, you see that the name of at least one commissioner was uh, federally indicted. Yeah. You know, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, I would like to have been shocked when I read that, but I wasn't. I really, I, and I mean that genuinely, when I saw that. Uh, a number of years ago, in a five, six, or whatever it was, there was another rate increase, a similar recession just as this, and a number of people here, just like this, and they gave commentary, only to find out afterwards the process was that the commission did not listen to anybody at those hearings at all, and gave the increase as prior state, prior to the, prior to the hearings. So that was very uh, unfortunate. And uh, I would say that we need to have a lot of this uh, audit work done by objective third parties just to make sure that the process is fair and objective. My own experience, my own personal experience with Johnson Utilities, unfortunately, has been one of poor service, poor customer relations, intimidation, okay, high prices, and water quality. And people are talking about the uh, water parts per million. Just a, uh, a, a service advice here for the neighbors of mine. Do not put Johnson water into your humidifiers because you will end up with white particulate dust all over your home. Uh, at the state level, uh, the regulators need to make sure that there is an appearance of Mr. Early. oversight. Yeah. Okay. okay. And uh, I'm willing to offer my own experience in this. I'm on LinkedIn. My name is John Hurley, H-U-R-L-E-Y. And I appreciate and I really hope that you provide the oversight needed for this utility. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hurley. Just to Frank off. And then uh, I've got Henry Grove, I think. I mean that right, Mr. Goff. Uh, Frank Goff, I live at 1792 West Vineyard Plains Drive, San Jose Valley. Uh, I've been, I bought my home there in uh, December of 2011. Uh, I am presently on the board of our HOA, uh, Skyline Ranch One, which has already spoken one board member. Uh, so, I'm just going to reinforce some of the things that have already been said by numerous people. Uh, we went from, uh, in 2015, for our, our water tax budget, we were billed $103,000. Uh, in 2016, that went to $151,323, uh, which is uh, totally decimated the budget that we had as an HOA. So uh, we met with Johnson Utilities shortly after that at their place uh, on Hunt Highway. Again, uh, same stories you hear all the time. We were told it must be our problem. We had leaks we didn't know about or whatever. Our uh, landscaper who uh, had been with us for six years and did other properties adjusts the water three times seasonally for throughout the year. He does not have variances in other properties. Here it showed spikes up and down, up and down, which no explanation. So same story, just reinforcing. Um, the other thing that we had to deal with uh, as an HOA with Johnson's is the mixing of the two well waters. Uh, that was presented to us when we asked them specifically uh, since you want to go through our park area in the middle of our property, uh, what kind of compensation can you give us for that? We were told that uh, you will not have your water uh, cost increase if you let us go through, which is basically intimidation. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, again, I think everybody here is trying to impress upon you gentlemen uh, that we need you to operate in your official capacities to protect this community, to get the standards of health and well-being and the negative economic impact that this company is having on the community resolved. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brown.
Henry Krogers? Is there a Henry here? Okay. That's okay. Sometimes people have to leave, so we understand that. Pat Towers. Thank you, Mr. Towers. And Rebecca, it uh, looks like Kiner is on deck. Good morning, and thank you for being here. Uh, what I'm hearing this morning kind of set me off track. Wait, what? Did you need to say yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, Pat Towers at 565 West Hereford Drive, Santan Valley, uh, Circle Cross Ranch. Um, what I'm hearing across the board here is not so much about great hikes as about, don't throw any rocks, uh, as about what we're already receiving for what we're paying. Um, when you have a household, they establish a baseline of usage. You have two people in the household, you have five. You have a pool, you don't have a pool. You have lawn, you don't have a lawn. For these wild swings, in usage on the same household, uh, that is very unusual. And for, for people to get the same canned answer across the board, that's, that's, that's arrogance and that's a problem. They think we're stupid, that's the problem. So my feeling is we, we have a choice to make. My wife and I made a choice 27 months ago when we moved here from California. We had a choice to make of which house to buy. One of the first things that I think needs to be done is it should be a required disclosure issue for yes, real estate yes. agents to tell people about the water problem. Because once you purchase a home, that's a big deal. You're in that home. You can't just jump ship and go somewhere else. So without that, our choice was taken away from us. We didn't, we didn't know about the water problem. When I come back to my house after visiting my kids in Los Angeles, Nobody's been in the house for four days, and I open up the door to the water closet in the master bathroom, and it smells like somebody just took a dump in there. Amen. That's a problem. Yeah. That has to be fixed. Yeah. So I don't think people are complaining about a rate hike. We understand cost of business, but, but give us something for it. If you got a steak dinner at the local restaurant for a buck and a half, if it's a lousy steak, it's not worth a buck and a half. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kiner. Rebecca Kiner, and then uh, I have uh, Philippa Fields on deck. Kiner. Kiner, thank you for correcting me. Your name and address is Kiner. My name is Rebecca Kiner. I am at 31296 North Claridge Circle, Santan Valley, Arizona. I have been here since 2002, so I've been here for quite a while. When my husband and I first bought our home here, this community and development was very new. It was our first home. We came out here expecting our first water bill to be commensurate with what my parents had always paid when I was growing up. 30 to 40 dollars. We figured, well, maybe, you know, somewhere around ballparkish. We get our first water bill back in 2002. Almost $100. We about went through. We were like, what? Our water bill has done nothing but go up and up and up. We have a family of five. We have no pool. We have redone part of our front landscaping to, um, in an attempt to try and help with the water usage. So for a family of five with no pool, Johnson Utilities says that we use 19,000 gallons a month. 19,000 gallons. I know people who have property with horses and irrigation that don't even use half of that. We've talked to them. 
we tried to get them to come out and check for leaks. They said that they refused to come out and check for leaks until we had paid, even though my husband had gone around and checked. They said that that didn't matter. We had to pay a professional to come out and check. I fought and fought and argued with them. They finally sent somebody out, of course, at a time when I wasn't home to even verify that somebody came. And they said, no, everything's fine, you're good. And like everybody else, you can call first thing in the morning and you're number 103 on the waiting list. <coughs> the other thing I would like to address is the quality of the water. When we first moved out here, we had a very large, well, fairly large, a 55 gallon fish tank. Every time we turned around, our fish were dying. It didn't matter what we did. We tried everything. <coughs> so someone at the plant department um, recommended that we test our water from our home. So I did that. I took the water straight from our tap, went down to the pet store, and had them test our water. Our water straight out of the tap was tested for nitrates at eight parts per million. EPA legal limit is 10. Our water is not clean, and we are paying through the nose for nasty, stinky water, and they want to up our bill even more. Please, please look out for us. We are hands are tied. We need your help. Thank you, Ms. Speaker. So the pet feeders. Okay. After uh, Ms. Fields is Ted Massey, M-A-S-S-E. -S -E. <laughs> the meantime, if some of you who decided they didn't want to speak and filled out a form and have changed your mind, you can go back over and fill out another form if you want to speak. And if anyone who's come in late and is, would like to speak, you can go over and fill out a form and we'll still listen. Thank you. Hi, my name is Philippa Fields and um, I'm actually the Senate kind of go over what I have written down here. <laughs> I live at 3116 West Hayden Peak Drive. I am a resident in the Santan Heights subdivision. And I just, I'm probably going to mention what's already been mentioned already before, but I just feel like, you know, it's important to me and my family, the community, and everybody, you know, has this uh, water problem here. Um, so I've lived here since 2007. Um, I also have concern about the healthy water. We can't cook or boil it because of the nitrates. Can't drink the water either. The water is also used for, I'm sure, farming, and it will contaminate, you know, crops that people are consuming. You know. Also, you know, animals, you know, they need to use it too, and they too can become ill from the water as well as us humans. Um, we have to continually purchase water bottles, case after case, you know, fill up the water bottles excessively that we do have. Why are we paying to utilize that annoying it's unhealthy water? We need better water filtration, you know, sanitized water. We need positive, healthy, clean, you know, type of reinforcement for the water service that we pay for. We need to have a decrease, you know, in the pay for compensation of of or for the past continuance of bad water that we're charged for. There are certain entrances in our home and at our entrances um, here at the Santan Valley, you know, Santan Heights entrance and others, I'm sure, that we have to drive by or pass. And it also has a high sewage bad smell that's extremely intolerable. Um, I've uh, not allowed my children to go out and play uh, a lot more now because of this, because they use the sprinkler water systems, you know, and 
I'm just horrified that, you know, they'll be playing, the water will come out of the sprinklers, get into their mouth, and um, I just want to say that uh, you can please help us in the community slash subdivisions involved to obtain clean, safe, healthy water for our families. Lastly, um, put in effect and reasonable fair billing for our water and sewage plus all the extra charges on our bills. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Fields. Ted Massey, and then I have William Wilson on deck. Is there Ted? There we go. <coughs> Hello, uh, my name is Ted Massey. I live at 409 East Neal Train Trail, Johnson Ranch, uh, Santana Valley. Uh, I moved here in 2007, mid-2007. I come from Illinois, uh, worked many years in California, uh, manufactured custom wheels. And um, uh, I got uh, disabled from a massive car accident and decided uh, in 07 to get out of California, cost of living. I got a realtor and found a house in uh, Johnson Ranch. And uh, uh, immediately I got bored here and went back to work and I would come over about every three months, and I did that for a period of, uh, till the end of 2013, about six years. My house mainly sat, um, uh, I ran the sprinkler systems and, and did everything necessary to keep it up. So in 2013, I decided that's it, I'm done, and I moved in. And, no one ever told me to watch out the water here, don't drink it. Um, you know, I had no clue. I've owned eight homes in my life, never seen anything like this. So I cooked with it. I, I'm a coffee freak. I make coffee every morning. I drink a lot of coffee. Um, by the beginning of uh, 2014, around March, April, I started losing a lot of blood and uh, couldn't figure out what was wrong and I let it go and I let it go. Come September, I went to a uh, colon specialist in, in uh, Gilbert and uh, uh, they claimed that I had stage four cancer. And basically, if I didn't immediately have surgery and chemo and all this stuff, then I wasn't going to last 90 days. So, luckily, I, I had friends in California that were very educated medically. And after researching this, I decided, no, I'm going to fight it by organics and uh, eating the right foods. And I, I had a neighbor tell me, uh, don't drink the water here. Um, so I started, you know, buying water and, and you know, I cook with it. I, I don't touch the water here at all anymore, but the tape shop. So, uh, make a long story short, I fought the cancer all this time, about three years. And a year ago, got into my prostate and bladder and Ten times more problems. I have to take daily medications, and it's cost me so far about twenty thousand dollars in medical bills. Um, I think it's very, very sad that uh, it took me a long, long time to realize just how bad the water is. Like someone stated earlier, if you buy a house here, you should be informed of this. I learned the hard way could cost me my life. Um, all of a sudden, someone tells me at the UPS store, well, we got another minute there, take your time. Uh, there's gonna be a very big increase in the price. 
I'm shocked. If you lowered the price 50%, it wouldn't be enough. Uh, I feel sorry for the people. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Massey. Is Mr. Wilson here? Thank you, Mr. Oh, okay. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. And your address for the record. My address is 5982 East Valley View Drive, uh, Florence. That's a magic branch. Uh, I've done a lot of research on this Johnson Utilities, their water, their sewer, <coughs> their reclamation of water. And every time I look at something at Johnson Utilities, it shows failure. Uh, about a year or so, we had a scare where they had high nitrates in the water. The state took the test, and, and they finally said, oh, they made a mistake, and the one that uh, Johnson Utilities writes, OK. So I wrote a letter to the commission. And Mr. Buck answered it and sent me a, to contact this girl from Johnson Utilities. And I did that. And I says, you know, how can one, per, one test show the water with high nitrates and yours doesn't? And I says, Where, where's the logic in that thing? And she went on to tell me, well, we shut down one of the wells right there next to their offices because it was having high nitrates. And uh, so what we're going to do with it is we're going to take that high nitrate well, we're going to mix it with better water so it brings the nitrate lower levels lower. But to me, that is like, you know, nitrates settle in your plant, in your pipes, everything else in your home. And that doesn't solve any problem. That still gets you back to the nitrates where they were. And the next thing I looked at is I went to the zoning over the uh, county. And uh, I wanted to find out all about how they uh, obtained their permits and all this type of things. And so I started reading through the uh, zoning file, and one one uh, engineer that was an engineer from Casa Grande that was knows a lot about water and, and that type of thing. He testified that you know it, it's almost illegal to build a sewer treatment plant higher than your well because that sewer treatment plant material runs downhill when it goes into the ground. And, they put, and, they, and then they put it on the golf course, which is still uphill from our well. So, you know, and, and I tried to find out from ADEQ, which is a very uncooperative organization. I've never seen anything like it. But uh, they, Anyway, they... Uh, yeah, you were picking on ADEQ. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. <laughs> well, I ought to pick on them because I've had so many phone calls from there that I still haven't got an answer from these people. They still haven't called me back after two years. But anyway, uh, this water problem with the well... I only got another minute. ...is a serious problem. And the next thing is a sewer treatment plant. The sewer treatment plant, they say, oh, now we got it in good shape and it's not polluting. Yet the other day, we have another high nitrate reading. How does that happen if it's in good shape? You know, all we get from uh, Johnson Utilities is just lie after lie after lie. They, they can't tell us, that, you know, here's what we're doing, where this is, this is formed out. Uh, we have experts coming here looking at this thing. No, they just lie and lie and lie. 
And the third thing is the golf course. They're putting water on that golf course. It's sure, it's, it's partially treated because they put chlorine on it. But it doesn't kill the pathogens and carcinogens on that golf course. And I just had a friend a few weeks ago that got E. coli bacteria infection from playing golf out there. Well, thank you, Mr. Wilson, for your okay. testimony. Thank you. I have Karen. Karen, who is here and on deck, is James Hunt. Karen? Yes. Great. Yes, my name is Karen Neely. B is a boy, U I E. My address is 2685 East Halloween Road in Santan. Um, I wasn't going to say anything, but it just so happens I had my bill with me. And I am not like the brightest person around. But on here it says my water uses is $5.31. And my bill is $80. Okay, so that I'm not understanding. Um, I moved here a couple of years ago from Chicago. Don't know if it has anything to do with anything, but Chicago has the best drink of water in the United States. Yes. And we have a water purification plant. Yes. And it started by the Chicago Police Department to make sure no one can come in there and tamper with it. Now, I don't know what the situation is here, but if you can try and institute something like that so we can have good water, because even though I'm only using $5 worth of water when I first moved here, and it's just me, they said that my bill was going to be $60 no matter how much water I use. But I would like for it to be consistent with what I use and let me pay for what I use. I also had to pay um, a deposit on the water. And in most places, when you pay a deposit and you go over a certain period of time, 12 to 18 months, you get your deposit back. But not with Johnson Utilities. They refused to give me my deposit back. And as far as I was concerned, that was theft. Yeah. because I'm entitled to that money. Mm -hmm. And they said, oh, we'll just put it on your next bill. I don't need no help paying my bills. I pay my own bill. But if I gave you a deposit, that deposit should have been returned to me. Yes. And, you know, like I said, I'm new here, but I just think it's a sad day and it sounds like a bad movie when you can't drink the water. Don't drink the water. That's very sad. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Mr. Hunt, James Hunt, and on deck, uh, Mr. Milton Fender. Mr. Fender is on deck. Thank you, Mr. Hunt. Good Thank you, sir. Here. Thank you, Mr. Grant, Mr. Brogan. Uh, I've been a resident of Johnson Ranch since 2006, and uh, I know Mr. Johnson personally. We've worked together on some projects. I understand this hearing is to discuss a proposed rate increase in the water rates that he has requested. I understand that with inflation and cost of doing business that you do need to raise water rates occasionally, but the increase that I understand that he has requested is way more than the one or two percent inflation that we've had going on for the last several years in, this, in, in, our, in the area. Uh, I also understand that they are putting in water and sewer lines in new communities, and uh, I feel like that those costs of putting in those water and sewer lines in new communities need to be absorbed by the construction people that are putting those, that are building those communities. I don't think I need to pay for putting in water lines to the new 200 or 300 homes that's going in my, to the north of here. Uh, you know, I, I, I've listened to people talking about Johnson Ranch. I was aware of Johnson Ranch. I was aware of Mr. Johnson's reputation when I moved here. At the time we moved here, we moved here because we liked the area, we liked the community. I realized that our water bill was high. I knew it was going to be high because it's 
you know, we have properties in Sun Lake where the water bill's half what it is here, but those water lines have been in for 40 years. Ours were new. It costs more to put those in. There is a half-life or a life expectancy of water lines. These should last for, you know, mine in front of my house has been in for 12 years, which is what I've been here. They'll last a lot longer. I can understand if he needs to raise the rates for paying his people, and but I don't understand the rate increase that he is recommending. Uh, so uh, that's basically what I came to say. Thank you, sir. Well, thank you, Mr. Mr. Milton Fender, and then uh, Ray Antonio, and Antonio is on deck. Mr. Fender. Yep. Thank you. Thank you for the meeting today. I appreciate it. Uh, I know we all do. My name is Milton Fender. I live at 32145 North Dog Lake Court in uh, San Juan Valley. Been a we've been a resident here since 2009. Uh, it, and I, I'm, I'm primarily speaking to the water rate increases. Uh, with multiple rate increases that I feel we've had over the last few years, we haven't seen any increase in the quality of the service or water that we receive. So to look at new rate increases with no quality doesn't really make sense. Although I did put in a whole house filter um, because I felt it was necessary for the safety of my family. A resident of Golden, Colorado as well, and as you know, Golden has some really good water. Uh, they make some really good beer. But, um, but the sewer rates there are based on consumption. And I don't believe the sewer rates here are based on consumption. Um, we consume about the same amount of water in Golden, about 3,000 gallons a, a month. And our sewer rates are $7 a month based on the, that consumption. Obviously, here in Arizona, our consumption average is about $3,000 a month. But our sewer rates are $44 a month, which is six plus times more. And they're proposed to go up. And that's where I see the disconnect. I don't see anyone in the government asking me to conserve while raising my rates. If we really need to conserve water, and I, knew we, I know we do here in Arizona, um, the rate should reflect that conservation, and I don't see that they're doing that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ray Antonino, thank you, sir, and on deck, uh, Charlie Flowers, I believe. Mr. Antonino, your address, please, sir. Address is 31475 North Shale Drive, Santan Valley. First, I'd like to say thank you for having these hearings today and listening to everybody speak. I want to thank you for these two right here that are writing everything down keeping track of everything. I've watched them. And this young lady here also, the stenographer. I have a few concerns that I think this board needs to know about with Johnson Utilities. In all fairness, I've had over 56 leaks. I quit counting at 56 in my yard. We have substandard contractors doing business in this state. That may lead to some of this uh, Johnson Utilities stating that you have a leak because we do. The previous owner of our home had a bill upwards of almost $400 for water. When I went in and fixed all these leaks, our bill was down between $180 and $120. So it did adjust. However, in 2015, I did notice that on our bill from Johnson Utilities, our meter number was taken off. And now, when I go to pay the bill at Johnson Utilities, <clears throat> in their program, on their computer, they have my bill with the meter number on it. But the one that's mailed out does not. <clears throat> also, another concern is that periodically, uh, I noticed that my water has air in it. And if anybody has, when they turn their spigot or faucet on, if you get any type of, of spitting, you have air in your system. We all know that water is solid, can't compress. So we're paying for meter 
water, not meter water and the air. That's something that needs to be looked at because if that also equates to your sewer bill, it may elevate that as well. And that's all I have to say. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Antonio. Anthony. Anthony, no, I'm sorry. To Mr. Uh, Charles Flower. Good afternoon. My name is Charlie Flowers. I'm 1289 West Belmont Red Trail, Santan Valley. Can't yeah, shut the phone off again. Uh, what I'm concerned about, and I've I've had uh, water pressure problems in our district, in our area. I'm up in Circle Cross on the corner. And a couple years ago, we've lived there since. Well, we've been here since 2009. And our water pressure, I just checked my neighbors before I came today, and it's 104 pounds. Now, you don't know that's way too high for water pressure. A couple, three years ago, I went over and I complained, and they told me, well, if we're within 15 and 100, we're within our tolerance. Well, we all know 15 is way too low and 100 is way too high. I put a regulator on my system so that I, I got it regulated so I can control it. But the other, my other concern is the quality of water in this area. It's, it's not very good water for what we're, we're required to pay. So, if there's something you can do to make the service better and the quality better, then I guess I wouldn't be too concerned about a little rate increase. But it's plenty high here now. I'm from South Dakota, too, and our water rate, we use a lot more water up there, and it's less. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. So this is, uh, kind of wraps everybody up. Did anybody want to speak that I haven't uh, heard? Come on up, Bill. Do you have any more over there? Are you hiding them on me? <laughs> hey, Nick, would you get those for me and bring those over here? Sir? Is that the, the, the last one? Okay, thank you. So I'll need you to, to give us your name and your address. So I am Carol Brawley. Oh, that's, oh, that's it. Okay. And you my can fill address, that out after you're done. You don't have to do that. So. My address is 687 East Goldus Way at Johnson Ranch. The one thing that I haven't heard anybody mention that is a rubs the spot raw on me. <laughs> is that the timing of this rate increase is suspect in my mind because we all know that Mr. Johnson and the utility company are being sued and have legal charges against them, which uh, somebody's going to have to pay for. And right after that all happened, then we found out there's a new rate increase in the works. Um, is that what it's going to be? That's only a question. There are no answers right now. I, I think I will just take a quick moment. Earlier I shared that there wasn't a submission for a rate hike, and I've not seen a request for a rate hike. The commission themselves, reacting to this community, ordered Johnson Utilities to prepare a rate case so that they could, it's the only way we get to audit. So I know I've heard several folks talk about a rate hike and several folks talk about, I've seen how high it's going to be. We haven't seen that. Okay. Because what we've done is we've gone to Johnson Utilities and we told them we want to do an audit. And that's what, that's what this is. So this proposal for a rate case is about bringing all of those numbers in. Only share that with you because you may not have been here earlier when I said it, but that's what's really okay. going on. So if there's some feedback, if somebody in the community is sharing that this is the rate hike request, well, then there just isn't one just yet. But I, I didn't want to interrupt you, but I felt was, I needed to share. I, nobody has said that to me. It was something that I thought of all by myself. But it was when I, once I thought of it, it kind of stuck there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. And thank you. Yeah. Well, it's our pleasure to be here. I'm going to let Commissioner Burns have a few comments. And I just want to share, uh, there's five commissioners. I believe all of them are coming. 
I mean, the, the, the Commissioner Burns is going to be here all day because there's another meeting uh, later this afternoon. I have a meeting that I have to run to. And I think Commissioner uh, Faris, who's here this morning, is getting two teeth root canal as we speak. So I'm thinking, I'd much rather be here with you folks. So, and uh, I think some others may be coming in as well tomorrow as well. So uh, you have the commissioner's attention across the board. So I'm going to uh, pass the microphone on to Commissioner Burns. I want to thank you for taking your time to come and share with us today. This is important. I want to thank the supervisors for being here. I especially want to thank ADAQ for making more notes than I am, which is on a big, big sheet. So I thank you for being here, and mostly to the community for coming out and uh, sharing their stories. We really appreciate it. Commissioner Burns. Thank you, and thank you for being here. And, and again, I just emphasize how important it is to have this information that we're getting here in, in, in the docket. Uh, and I will make a correction. I'm not going to be able to be here this evening. I have a ton of commitment. But I'll be back tomorrow. Uh, the commissioners that are not here can see all of your comments. They all end up in the docket, and so they're available for all the commissioners to see. Uh, in addition to that, we have uh, each commissioner has a policy advisor who uh, is also keyed into uh, monitoring the docket so that uh, the information that gets in there gets back to us. So uh, that, I think, again, emphasizes how important it is that you be here and, and that you speak up and uh, let us know what, uh, what is going on. So uh, thank you again for being here.